if you guys don't mind, I'm going to pull up my betmma.tips here because I think that there's an interesting conversation to be had. So first of all, I'm in a random uh, you know page here, but let's go ahead and click over to betmma.tips. So the reason I do this is for people that are new here or for people that have um, you know not been rocking with me for a while, no problem. Welcome aboard. This is my graph as an MMA handicapper over time. And you could see right here at the bottom, guys, I was not a very good handicapper when I first started. And you could see I've been tracking my bets for a long time. So if we go back over to the document, the first events back here, right, minus 0.75. I got all the way down to minus 46.6 units, negative 46 units at one point in my betting career. And I had to make a lot of changes and I had to really decide, like, what am I get? Do I want to be a profitable better? Am I here to, you know, just have fun? What am I doing here? Why am I wasting my time? And I buckled down. I started to change uh, my understanding. I, I read a lot more books. I did a lot more research, a lot more reading. And ever since then, I've been a profitable, successful better. But I've still had dips. I've still had peaks and valleys and times where I was, you know, at the highest of highs where I went on all these runs of you know, winner, 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 winner. But I've also had times where I plateaued a little bit or where I went down or a little bit up and then a little bit down. It's part of the uh, long battle of trying to be a profitable better. It's not easy and you have to constantly adjust. The market makes changes over time. There's more people in the market. There's different people in the market as well. So there's things that I've been trying to learn about my own results by going back over time. And I always want you guys to be cognizant of that, right? If you're not learning from your mistakes, you're doomed to repeat them. So I look at my graph, I look at my uh, my long-term results, and this is you know the proof in the pudding, I feel, right? I've been doing this for a very long time, and I have an 8% ROI long-term betting on these fights, 146 units of profit. And I also want to show you guys the year-to-date stuff, right? So instead of just looking at the overall, the long-term, let's talk about 2024 this year so far. So we scroll on down. So far this year, sorry guys, I'm not a very tech savvy person, but I hope you guys can see this. So far this year, plus 13.9 units at a 9% ROI. So I'm you know, happy with the 9% ROI, but I'm not satisfied with where we're at on the year. You know, my goal is to uh, get to you know 50 units of profit by the end of the year. And that's not going to be easy, but I've done it before, right? I've, I've gotten 99 units before. So I know it's possible. I want to set goals that are attainable, that are difficult, but, you know, that are uh, attainable. And so for me, I, I have, you know, a few months left of the year to make it happen. And so I have to be strategic. I have to say to myself, okay, I'm on a tough run, but this is what I want to highlight right here, guys. Max losing streak, 11 events, minus 40.5 units. So like I said, when I first started tracking, I went on one of the coldest runs that you'll ever see. I did it all publicly. I said it at every event. I was there tracking my results saying, hey, I lost money again today like an asshole. Um, I've been transparent through the whole thing. And what I can't do is make fucking false promises to you guys and say, oh, every time I'm going to win, every bet I'm going to be right. Um, you know, I've never gone on an a 11 event winning streak, right? The longest I ever went on was nine, won 66 units in nine weeks. So. At, at the best of times, I'm one of the best in the world. At the worst of times, I'm the squarest guy you know. So the, the God's honest truth is a good gambler is somebody that can realize, hey, this is where my edge is. Slow and steady wins the race. And don't try and be something I'm not, right? If after a couple of tough weeks of being an underdog better, I say, now I'm going to bet nine leg parlays and just fuck. Like you can't switch up what brought you to the dance, but you also don't want to say, uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to stick to what I'm doing, even if it doesn't work 10 times in a row, even if it doesn't work a hundred times in a row, it's like, you want to say to yourself, okay, would I do the same thing again over? So I went back and review all my bets and say to myself, was this a good bet or a bad bet objectively after the fact? And a couple of my bets lately have just been bad bets. Like bets that after the fact I could say there was information before the fact that should have told me not to bet this. And sometimes when you're on a rough run, you get a little bit in your own head. You're you're overthinking. So for me, I'm trying to always be level with you guys about the process. The process is long-term, we win more than we lose. The short-term is sometimes you go on a little bit of a tough run and I don't want to be a bullshit artist. 
a lot of bullshit artists in the gambling space, a lot of bullshit artists in, uh, you know, in the public commentary space about anything, right? So what I'm going to tell you guys is when I'm doing well, I'm going to tell you guys what I'm doing poorly. I'm going to tell you guys, this is something I've done well on in the past. I'm going to tell you guys, these are fighters I've struggled to bet on, you know, and, and I've done poorly because that's what transparency is about to me. That's what this show is about to me. We started this years ago saying good guys versus the bookies. So each and every week, I, I consider myself a good guy. I hope that all you guys in here in the chat, the sharpest chat in the game, take a cheers with me. Um, and I hope that you guys are all good people, free people, right? Try and do the right thing by people. That's all we're trying to do here. You know, um, in terms of my MMA information, I truly believe I have information that most people don't have in terms of notes that I've taken over seven plus years watching these fights like a nerd, right? Um, you know, levels of notes that other people find baffling, 20 pages of notes on certain fighters, um, Alexander Volkanovsky, Cyril Gunn, these people, I have 20 page profiles on them of, of their fights that they've had in the UFC. And then meanwhile, every event I make, you know, uh, whatever it is, per, uh, performance and odds range, social media stuff. I try and really isolate unique data points, things that I could try and help other people. Um, and one thing that stood out to me this week, guys, that really warmed my heart was somebody in the Patreon trying to remember um, the gentleman's name. I believe it was Sujit, but I just want to go back and see if I could find it for a brief second. I can't find it. And in the interest of time on the show, um, I won't get stuck on this for too long. So give me less than 10 seconds. And if I can't find it, then I'll give up. Everybody was, oh, there it is. Our guy Sujit said, Liam, I know you didn't have a great night, but your write-ups helped me make money tonight. Thank you. And what I have always tried to stress is I, I'm not going to be Nostradamus, right? But what I can tell you is what I bet and why. And then if I do well, great. But if I don't, I'm sorry. I, all I can tell you is the truth, what I bet and why. Now, for other people, there's a lot of people that are very sharp bettors. There's a lot of people that are good MMA bettors but they don't always have all the information or they don't always have all the time or they prefer to read somebody else's opinion before they part ways with large sums of money, right? Some people are betting way more money than I am. I bet $100 units, right? And you guys can look very transparent about that. I post my tickets. I've, I've been doing this for a long time. But then other people, they're betting thousands of dollars on plays, right? They're, they're really uh, investing hundreds of thousands of dollars on all these different sophisticated betting syndicates and what. That's I respect the shit out of the game. I understand how the game works. So when people are trying to get down that amount of money, they might not have time to do, you know, uh, research on mixed martial arts fights. They're betting on 10 different markets, but they know that my MMA information is very quality and they'd like to read it over before they part ways with their money. So I have write ups on every single UFC fight that takes place over the course of the year. And all the ones that have taken place over the last however many years, I've been writing full card previews. I've been writing notes on these fighters for a very long time. That is where a lot of my information comes from, is longevity in the space. I do a lot more written material than most people in general, just because I write every week for Roto Grinders, a full card preview, seven, eight pages about these fights um, you know, on a weekly basis, prelims, uh, main card, every single fight covered. And so it's not all going to be right but it's all going to be my best effort. It's all going to be my, my sincere analysis, me trying my best. And so that's what I can promise you. Now, as for contender series, I wanted to talk about the fact that's going to be coming back. That's something that I've always been very passionate about. I love contender series as well. I had one year on contender series where I did not lose a single event. Um, we just won every event 10 weeks in a row uh, on contender series. Some of them were small 0.2 units, 0.3, but we won every single event on contender series, which was awesome. And um, we obviously have had up and down since, right? It wasn't, it wasn't smooth sailing every season of contender series, but overall it's a fun product. It's a time when, you know, willingness to do a little research and dig into some of the numbers uh, can pay off pay, playing big underdogs. I remember last year we called Brenson Ribeiro. It was like plus 600 and uh, knocked out Bruno Lopes. Uh, like there was a few really huge moments. I called more than one full card, uh, degenerate parlays uh, with my guy Gordo last year as well on contender series. Um, you know, uh, shout out to my guy Dixon in the chat says Liam became the gassy F whisperer on contender series. I said to take the ends by sub. I warned people, Greg Velasco is going to take that back. Uh, shout out to my guy, Mark Schillingberg in the chat says you're a beast Liam. I watch all your content and gain a lot of valuable knowledge. I appreciate that. 
Uh, I appreciate all the hard work and time you put in. Just want you to know I gained so much from what you do. I appreciate you, brother. It's a blessing. It's always my pleasure. I always uh, just come to you guys in earnest. I love the fights. I love talking about it. And uh, I appreciate everybody who spends time with me on these shows. Shout out to my guy, Tristan. Says, respect to you, Liam. Have a good night. Much love and huge respect to you. Uh, you have to pick your spots and be smart about it, says Zero Bob. No doubt about it. I think that that's a great point. Shout out to my guy, Real Fight Picks, says, Liam, you are a legend. Don't be so hard on yourself. I appreciate you, brother. I, I think that when you're in this position, right, where you have an audience where people come and they listen to what you have to say about fights, then you it's incumbent on you to try and take it seriously, right? And, and to be very sincere and transparent. So if I am telling people that I take this seriously and I really try and do a good job and I do shitty, I'm not going to then come back to you guys and be like, hey, didn't I do a great job? If I've had a tough couple of weeks, I'm going to let you guys know, hey, I've done a, a, a tough, you know, couple of weeks. Like it's, it's not been my best stuff. But the other thing is I will then write up the night after, Hey guys, here's the results that we had over the weekend. Here's all the things I did fucking stupid right here. Here's all the shitty decisions I made. Here's the things I got wrong because if you're not learning from your mistakes, you're doomed to repeat them. And so for me, that's the thing that I'm always trying to learn from my mistakes. I've made plenty of terrible, stupid bets. And if you guys have done this for long enough, then you've made really terrible, stupid bets. If you guys don't mind, think of the most uh, ridiculous, stupid bet you've ever made and send it in the chat. I bet Gerald Mearshard against Kamzat Chemaev at like plus 450 or something like that. He got knocked out by literally one punch in like 28 seconds or something. Uh, so we've all made really dumb bets. But if you make fewer dumb bets, bad bets over time, and you make more good bets over time, then you win. That is the, the name of the game as I see it. So my goal is, hey, Hopefully the last couple of weeks, I've gotten all the shitty bets out of my system. It's time to dial in, find some good bets. I've had profitable results on these fighters in the past. Looking at the previous money line results, about plus nine units for me at a 28% ROI. So that's my goal is to just get back on track with a crop of fighters that I've done well on before and a card style. This low-key apex, a little bit quieter, a little bit more under the radar. Those have been the cards that I've been doing better on this year. So Lord willing... Knock on wood. We're going to keep the ball rolling there. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, please, guys, go ahead and fire as many as you have uh, in the uh, comment section down below.